I'm constantly surprising myself that I'm still uploading reading wrap-ups. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Now for today's video, I'm doing my May reading wrap-up. The reason why I said I'm still surprised that I'm still doing reading wrap-ups is because I normally typically don't do reading wrap-ups and for three months consistently, I have posted reading wrap-ups. I have two videos that I did want to make sometime in the future. One of the videos you guys probably already know, which is the one that is summer vacation book recommendations. It's books featuring travel for those of you who can't travel this year and who want to escape through books. Another video that just sprung into my mind recently is one that is books on my radar. So these books are trending books on TikTok. I've seen it everywhere on BookTube. Maybe I even saw it on Bookstagram. And they're books that I'm keeping at the near top of my TBR list simply because they are trending books. I thought that video would be pretty interesting for those of you who always feel out of the loop in situations, always feel that, and they only realize that it's a popular book like a few months after everybody has already finished talking about it. I think that that video would be very helpful for people like me because I find that I'm always behind on the trend for most of the times and I don't even know that books are trending until after it finished trending. So let me know in the comments down below if those two book videos are something that you want to watch. Let me know which one you want to watch first but we're gonna get started with a May reading wrap up for this one. In the month of May it was the Asian Heritage Pacific Islander month and you guys know that I love reading reading books about my culture, books about other Asian cultures, and just learning about different cultures overall. And I did ask you guys if you guys wanted to watch a separate video featuring Asian authors with recommendations to add to your TBR. Unfortunately, I never really got time to it. But for this video specifically, it does include a lot of Asian authors because in the month of May, I obviously mostly focused on Asian authors. Okay, so I think the first book that I'm going to wrap up is this romance novel that was released last year and it was on the top of my radar, but then I just never got around to reading it. And this one's called The Donut Trap by Julie Tu. Now, if I remember correctly, I think it's about a Colombian Chinese family and they move to America to start a donut shop and the donut shop is their main source of income and our heroine is not our stereotypical Asian character. She did go to university but unfortunately for her she didn't find a job right away after graduation. She kind of fell behind on her career so she has been helping around in the donut shop and she feels that she is not like the perfect daughter that her parents envisioned when they first, you know, when they had her. So she always is comparing herself and what she lacks to her peers because her peers are young, successful, rich, and bright. Meanwhile, she is just trying to create donuts and market them so that the family business stays alive. And it's there in college where she meets a cute boy and then after graduation, and then she has worked in the donut shop for a couple of months, for a couple of years, whatever, she sees the boy again. And then that's when their relationship kind of just starts. Anyways, this book, I gave it a three out of five stars. It fell below my expectations because I wanted a little something more juicier. I wanted more drama, but I would highly recommend this book to you if you guys are looking for a book with less drama. It's kind of just a calm, sweet narrative of two people liking each other. Obviously it involves a lot of yummy donuts and a lot of yummy Asian food. Okay, so the next book that I want to wrap up is this one that is not from an Asian author, but it was one that was on my radar for a very, very long time simply because I found it on TikTok. It was, I think, previously released in Dutch first, and then they English translated and the English version was recently released. And I wanted to read this book so bad because it sounded so freaking interesting. It's basically about a moderator for social media. So think Facebook. And when you report a post, yes, it's like the algorithm. It's like the system. It's like everybody kind of just reviewing it and deciding whether or not it's a violation of the community guidelines. And then they take it down, right? But behind the scenes, there's actually someone who actually does it. It's a human moderator that actually reviews these posts day to day. And they unfortunately have to see a lot of traumatizing stuff, a lot of weird stuff. So this book called We Had to Remove This Post by Hannah Bevrotz and Emma Rolt. 
is specifically a novella centering around these moderators in social media and the most gruesome and horrific things that they have seen at their jobs. And yes, there are some things that they do describe that is a little bit triggering, but they don't really go too much in detail about it. Mostly it's about how our moderator lives her day-to-day -day life. It's a fiction novella, but obviously it's based on true events. And it's also about our moderator character falling in love with another moderator and then realizing that her own values and her own ethics and her own morals are being somewhat corrupted by these terms and conditions. Overall, I thought the story was somewhat interesting. It definitely wasn't what I expected because I thought that this one would be a nonfiction novel involving more specific examples of what moderators tend to see on a day-to-day -day basis. And it just fell short of my expectations and I ended up giving it a two out of five stars. The next book that I wanna talk about is this one called K-Pop Revolution by Stephen Lee. And this one is a continuation of his series called The K-Pop Confidential Series. Now, I read K-Pop Confidential last year, and it's essentially about a Korean-American girl debuting in a girl group for one of the biggest Korean entertainment companies. And then she quickly realizes that the K-pop industry is severely toxic. It's not good for your mental health. It's not good for your physical health. And we kind of end off in this like one explosion of a scene where she reveals this to the whole like K-pop community and also to like the whole wide world. So there's a lot of drama circling her. And now this book follows up on that drama. What are the repercussions of her exposing her company like that? Will she still be able to debut and fortunately for her people are on her side because obviously people are really caring of human rights so everybody is supporting her for kind of being a whistleblower for the community but she also has her dreams somewhat come true too as well because another record company wants to hire her and sign her and have her debut in a girl group. So this book focused a lot on her journey of debuting in a girl group. Overall, I enjoyed it, but this one for some reason took me a very, very long time to finish. It was through audiobook, but for this audiobook, it took me like maybe four days to finish, which is highly unlike me because usually I put it at three times the speed and I can listen to an audiobook like maybe in one day, but this one was just taking forever. And and I think it was because it had a lot to deal with celebrity like romance celebrity gossip celebrity this and celebrity that and I don't like reading about celebrity books sometimes because it just feels so superficial and it was also very difficult to read this book too as well because I am a huge fan of k-pop so there was like a lot of things in the book that they were describing that I was kind of familiar with already so it was just kind of hard but with all that being said, I still really liked it and I still would recommend you to check out this book if you haven't yet already. Okay, so the next book that I wanted to talk about is this one called Go Hex Yourself by Jessica Clare. And this is one that I have read for a recent reading vlog that I have posted. So if you guys haven't checked it out already, definitely go check that one out. But Go Hex Yourself by Jessica Clare is essentially a fall witchy read that was released in the middle of summer and spring. I don't know why they chose to release this book right now, but I read it and I thoroughly enjoyed it. So essentially it's about our heroine who is a human character and she is hired to be an assistant to a witch, but she doesn't believe in witchcraft. So she thinks that our employer is just insane and she's psycho because she's going on and off about curses and hexes and things like that and she just thinks she's crazy but she doesn't care as long as she gets paid but unfortunately for her she has to meet her employer's nephew who is our hero who is a warlock and who is very grumpy so this romance is a sunshine grumpy trope that i really enjoyed and i love the witty banter that both characters had i love how they really disliked each other at first and i really liked how soft and slow burn it was at times and i really also liked our hero who was very super caring of her even though he said that he despised her. I gave this one a four out of five stars. So another book that I did read for AAPI month was Debating Darcy and I'm gonna butcher her name so I apologize in advance but by Sayatani Dasgupta is a YA slash middle grade book that it is a Jane Austen you know 
Pride and Prejudice retelling and basically is about our two characters who are in around middle school, high school years and they are on the debate team and obviously they are going head to head against each other because it is that enemies to lovers romance that everybody is familiar with. Our hero is Darcy to the extreme. So he, he loves to debate. So he is very smart and he knows his way around an argument. And unfortunately for our heroine, she just despises people who are always arguing on the wrong side. There's a lot of miscommunication in this book that leads him to look like a very despicable type of character. And our heroine cannot possibly fathom how this guy could even have these thoughts and these feelings towards really important issues. Now for this book, I thought it was going to be a lighthearted Jane Austen Pride and Prejudice retelling, but it turned more into a politically correct novel where our author tried to really shove down our throats the issues that are always plaguing the society today. I thought it took away from the romance and I just didn't really enjoy it. So I gave this one a two out of five stars. Oftentimes it was also super boring. So the next book that I did read was a memoir. I know it's been a long time since I picked up a nonfiction read and actually talk about it, but I was very curious about this one because I've seen it a lot on Instagram and I've also seen it around my library. So I just wanted to pick up the audiobook and boy oh boy it has quickly become one of my favorite books of this year and I really highly recommend you to check this one out. But this one is called How to American An Immigrant's Guide to Disappointing Your Parents by Jimmy O. Yang and I gave this one a five out of five stars right off the bat. I laughed my butt off. Jimmy is an actor who was best known for his role in Silicon Valley, which I haven't watched yet, but I really do want to watch it. I just need to find a streaming service for it. But he's also been in movies like Crazy Rich Asians, and I fell in love with his character in that movie. So obviously I wanted to pick up his memoir, and it's so freaking good. I think this book really resonates with first generation immigrants especially, and for like families that are in China, and like he knows Cantonese, he knows Mandarin, and he grew up with the Chinese culture. So listening to his experience of growing up in elementary school in Asia, and having to immigrate to America and learn to adapt to American society, learning to learn English, learning how to be thug, learning how to be cool, learning how to lose his accent, learning how to impress the, his parents by going to a Ivy League school and then disappointing them when he wanted to focus on acting is like a whole journey and a half. I really thought it was hilarious. It was relatable in a lot of times. There was a part in the book where he talked about Asian representation in media, where he talked about how he doesn't care if he has to play a character with an Asian accent and how there's a lot of Asian actors and actresses out there that don't want to play these types of characters because they think it's like very stereotypical. They think that it does poorly for the community, but he argues the fact that when he first immigrated to America, he actually had an accent and he felt even more represented by seeing these characters with Asian accents because that's just how it is. When you move to a different country, you start to have an accent of the main language that the country speaks. So I thought that that was such a fresh take on a pressing issue in the Asian Hollywood community where a lot of actors and actresses argue that it's extremely rude and stereotypical for the Asian character to always have an accent. The next book that I did read was another YA novel called Love Dakota by Jennifer Yen and Jennifer Yen actually wrote this book that I read last year. So she wrote a book called A Taste for Love and I really enjoyed that book so I decided to pick up her second novel called Love Dakota which basically features our heroine who is a coder. She really likes computers and she plans to become like a software engineer developer type of person when she grows up. And then um, this is the story of her doing matchmaking in her school because her grandma is a famous matchmaker and her, she thinks that, you know, it's 
faster and easier to match make on algorithms than to kind of like assess one person's life against another person's life manually. So she makes a bet with her grandma that she can set up some people in her school and have them have really nice relationships. So this one was a three out of five stars for me. I feel like it was more like a two and a half out of five, mostly because it featured a lot on our heroine and her friend and her matchmaking her friend and not more so on the relationship that she was building herself. So this one is also a Emma Jane Austen retelling and there was just like some elements that I didn't see from Emma. I didn't feel that yearning between our main heroine and also her best friend. So yeah, it was just an average read for me. I would still read Jennifer Yen, but this one just didn't really hit that mark that I wanted it to hit. So the next book that I did read was this one called Text For You by Sophia Kramer. And this one has been on my radar because I picked it up randomly at Chapters Indigo one day. This one felt like a Josie Silver novel. It followed our heroine who unfortunately lost her fiance and she is dealing with the grief of that. So she, every day, she texts his phone and she expects no replies, but she thinks that that is a good way of communicating with him in the afterlife. Our hero is very cold. He doesn't care about people's emotions and he's a very grumpy character, but he's starting to get more and more intrigued by this woman's message to obviously someone that is not him. And then our heroine really cares about emotions, really cares about, you know, what she did wrong to make the relationship end. And like, she's putting a lot of blame and guilt on herself. I know it does get sad a lot of the times, but it quickly like wraps you up in the book. So if you're struggling to pay attention to a specific novel, definitely go check this one out because I definitely felt the same way, but I was so easily absorbed into the story by its writing. So so another book that I wanted to talk about is actually a picture novel from Maggie Takuda Hall and Yaz Imura and this one's called Love in the Library. It's a picture book that I've read for AAPI month and honestly it was so freaking good. So basically it's about the Japanese concentration camps that did take place um, during the World War II in America and in Canada but this one focused in America and basically it's about our two characters meeting in the library and then it's about the injustice of it all about them being stripped away from their rights being pegged as aliens to the country and having you know people turn their backs on them and them losing everything that they've had before the war and then after the war they kind of return to nothing so it's really sad but it was a really like sweet novel about the two characters falling in love and I gave this one a five out of five stars it's definitely one worth checking out if you guys are curious about the novel and then obviously it's one checking out if you guys have younger readers in the house as well okay so in the month of May we also had our historical romance readathon that I haven't vlogged I haven't talked much about here on my booktube channel I am I'm a horrible host but in that week I did read a lot of historical romance novellas because I wasn't really in the mood to read a full-length novel so the first graphic novel that I talked about in my best books I have read so far video if you haven't watched it yet go check it out is this one called Miss Butterworth and the Mad Baron by Julia Quinn and it's her graphic novel that she illustrated with her sister her late sister it's very sad but this one at first started off really weird. I just did not like it. I, I could not believe that I spent so much money on a book that was so freaking weird. But then I read it and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Basically, it's about our heroine. It's a Cinderella retelling, basically. Our heroine gets casted away, gets put into a family, and she is being forced to be a maid. She has to be a slave for them. She finds her escape. And then she goes and she meets our hero and they have a liking to each other. And she is like basically the maid of the house, but he can't keep his hands and eyes off of her because he's just really attracted to her. And then there's a mystery involved because unfortunately for our hero, his previous wife, 
passed away mysteriously and it's about the readers figuring out like what actually happened to the wife. There's also villainous characters in the graphic novel that come springing out of nowhere. It was just really cute in the end too as well and I really liked it. So definitely go check it out but if you guys are not willing to pay you know the expensive price for a graphic novel maybe just pick it up from the library instead. Okay another book that I did read is this middle grade novel called Room to Dream by Kelly Yang and this one essentially is front desk number three a part of that series and I think you do have to read book number one and book number two before you read this one but this one was my least favorite out of all the books in that series simply because I felt that it just lacked that Kelly Yang oomph that I was looking for. Usually she like talks about a really potent issue in the community whether it be in the Asian community or in the Black community or just any pressing issue that we need to think about and social justice related but this one just felt like it was lacking a lot. It essentially followed our heroine who was writing stories for newspapers and she kept getting rejected but then she had a family vacation coming up so she flies to China and then it's there where she kind of like learns more about her culture and revisits all the places that she loved and eats all the food that she loves too as well. So I really like that aspect of it because I felt like that that was really crucial and really important for younger readers who haven't went back to the countries that they were born in so that they can learn more about themselves but other than that it was just kind of a very mediocre novel about our heroine kind of being a spoiled brat at times too as well. So overall I gave this one a three out of five stars. Okay so the next YA novel that I did read is called The Noah Family by Grace K. Shim and this one was a K-drama retelling. I swear to god it was. Basically our heroine does like a blood test thing so think of ancestry and then suddenly she gets all these messages from this person saying that they're related and that they would love to fly her back to Korea. So she thinks that this is like really strange because like she's like I never knew my family was this big. So she goes back to Korea and she realizes that she's part of a Chable family and a Chable family is basically a very influential rich family in Korea and like they can basically have the power to do a lot of many different things. Her grandma is actually like the founder of a really really luxurious and you know expensive department chain in Korea and they make a lot of money there and so she has to learn the names of all her cousins, the names of her family members, and then also obviously all the politics in the family too as well. So it's about her kind of exploring Korea which I really enjoyed. So it was really entertaining but then at some point it slowed down and I was like bored by it and I was just kind of waiting for this book to end but I was so glad that I never ended it or I never DNF'd it because quickly the drama picked up and it blew my mind. So I gave this one a four out of five stars. If you guys are curious to know what the drama is, definitely pick this one up. Another book that I did pick up that I really enjoyed is this one called Heiress Apparently by Diana Ma. This one is about a Chinese American young actress who gets casted for a very big upcoming Hollywood movie featuring a lot of Asian characters and actors and things like that. And the only problem is is that her family banned her from going to China ever again. So she's quickly wondering like why she is getting banned by her parents in China. But then when she goes to China she sneaks her way there without her parents knowledge and she realizes why. Because her face is the exact face of a very popular Chinese influencer and then it's also there where she realizes that she has this huge extended family in China and they are all influential, they're all rich, and they just are in politics once again. It's very messy and then our heroine is like trying to balance acting and also learning about the drama of her family and there were so many references to Chinese history in this book that I really appreciated because there's a lot of things that I'm familiar with in China and there's a lot of things that I'm not familiar with. So this one was so good and I highly recommend this one to you. Another book that I did read was this YA thriller novel called How We Fall Apart by Katie Zhao and this one I gave it a two out of five stars. I did not like this one. It's essentially 
about a group of students who are very high performers. They really care about the grades because they want to go to Ivy League schools. And unfortunately, one of them is like extremely bratty and I just didn't like her at all. But thank goodness because she died. So now this book centers around of who done it and it's like who would possibly kill the smartest girl in the class and then afterwards it focuses a lot on you know what students do to get to the top. There are some inappropriate things that happen in this book. One of our characters actually ends up you know in a relationship with one of the teachers, another one does drugs, and a lot of other people just do crazy wacky things. I just didn't really like it. I thought it was boring, I thought it was slow, and I didn't really care about who killed the girl because she deserved to die anyways. So I guess to quickly wrap up my historical romance readathon, um, I did read a couple of novellas that I think were worth mentioning. So one of them is called Once Upon a Townsbridge Story by Sophie Barnes, and I've read a lot of Christmas novellas during the historical romance readathon. Don't question me, I just did it. But basically our heroine is being paired off and match made to our hero and he is known to be a very gruff sort of character and she thinks that he will just be the most horrible husband ever. So she decides to make herself very unpresentable, make herself a laughing stock so that he has no choice but to end the engagement. And of course he sees right through it and I really enjoyed this one. I gave this one a four out of five stars. I thought it was so super cute for, of him just kind of watching her do her little charade but then quickly realizing that you know the real person is underneath and he's in love with her. So the next one that I did read is The Improper Proposition by Amy Rose Bennett and this one involves our heroine who is a widow and she is of an upper class status because she is a lady but then our hero is just the footman so if you guys are into you know romances where it's like rags to riches then this one's for you. I thought I wouldn't like it but I really enjoyed this one. So our heroine I think is also older than our hero too as well. So our heroine's attracted to the footman and then the footman's also attracted to her and they decide to throw caution to the wind and they decide to embark in a fun relationship but then they quickly develop feelings for each other and it's really just her kind of convincing him that they can be something together because she doesn't care about status and she doesn't care about her reputation because she's in love. I gave that one a four out of five stars. So another book that I did read for the historical romance readathon was this one called An Indecent Wager by Georgette Brown and Georgette Brown is going to be on my radar very soon because she writes really steamy historical romance novellas. So this one involves our heroine who loses a bet to a game of cards and then she now needs to forfeit her body so that he can you know reap his repayment and it's really hot but it just lacks a little bit of plot so I ended up giving it a three out of five stars. Add it to your TBR if you guys are looking for a steamy historical romance. And then the last one that I do want to talk about is this one called An Improper Christmas by Amy Rose Bennett and now this one involves our hero and heroine meeting each other at a Christmas party and then they have this like one thing like this one kiss and they automatically know that they are destined for each other and I thought it was also a very sweet romance too as well and I picked up a a lot of Amy Rose Bennett's books on Kindle Limited afterwards but I haven't read it yet but I will very soon. Anyways that is the end of my May reading wrap-up. Hopefully you guys added books to your TBR and I'll see you guys later in a new video. Bye! <laughs>